All right, guys, welcome back to Think Big Bodybuilding Media. If you're listening on audio, you're listening to Advices Radio. Guys, uh, feel free to subscribe. We've got a bunch of cool stuff constantly coming out. And today we are back on the road to nationals with super heavyweight Doug Fouché. What is up, brother? Thanks for being with me, man. I appreciate it. Oh, man. Thanks for having me. Super excited for this. Looking forward to it. So Definitely. this is it's been a fun uh, project that we've been doing with this because, you know, a lot of the guys in the amateur ranks, we haven't heard from from them. You know, it used to be, you know, maybe five, 10 years ago, we had uh, we had a lot of great media coverage, uh, you know, looking into behind the scenes of, you know, the guys that were coming into the shows and stuff. I feel like Dave Palumbo really pushed a lot of that stuff like back 2009 era somewhere in there. But uh, anymore, I mean, we see we see some really good contest coverage of the national shows, but we don't get to see who these guys are. So, you know, this will give us an opportunity to talk to you, see what you're all about and uh, and find out a little bit more about your bodybuilding because you have a hell of a freaking physique. You've been uh, oh, you're, you're, you. you're going into super heavyweight. And how many times have you competed at the national level now? This will be my fifth one. My okay. fifth at the national level. Yeah. Right on, man. We got talking before the show. So, Doug, uh, tell me, I got to hear the story because you just briefly told yeah. me you, you met Scott Stevenson. Now, you lived in New Mexico. I lived in New Mexico for like five years. Where where were you? Oh, really? I was in Albuquerque. I okay. pretty much grew up in Albu in between Albuquerque and Las Cruces. Oh, nice. Um, my mother lived in Albuquerque and then my dad's family lived in Las Cruces. And so while I was in elementary school, I would pretty much go back and forth every year, depending on which parent wanted to handle me for, you know, that time. I was a a chore of a child <laughs> from what I hear. <laughs> and uh and then I, I i stayed in albuquerque for high school okay. and that's that's where i was and then after high school didn't leave until i moved here to la well and, and i gotta ask you all about that because i know that you train out there at gold's venice which i mean i don't care what era we're in now it's still like that's a, the most iconic gym there is uh, um but, but i mean yeah yeah, but before we get to that, though, tell me uh, about uh, you met Dr. Scott Stevenson. He's one of our regulars here. He hosts our podcast, Muscle Minds. I hang out with him every other week and cover all sorts of stuff. Uh, you competed with him. It was that you said at your first your first show. Yeah, my first show ever was it's they they actually do now they've split it up again. But at the time they do two shows at once, the Mid USA and the Mr. New Mexico. OK. And uh, the Mid USA is a national qualifier that's open to everybody. And then the Mr. New Mexico, obviously, just for New Mexico residents. Um, but that was my first show ever. I came in as a super heavyweight, probably one of the few times or one of the only times I shouldn't have been a super heavyweight. I mean, I was <laughs> 23, 24 years old, something like that. And uh, he was the heavyweight. Uh, it was a pretty small show. I think I was actually uncontested in the super heavyweight, um, and he was the heavyweight. And I just, you know, like I said, I told you a little bit before the show, I still remember the guy taking off his shirt and his pants to get on the scale in the weigh-ins. Yeah. And, I mean, he he just – he was far and above anything I had ever seen and most people had ever seen there. Um, just quite the physique. And uh, then, you know, just so cool getting to talk to him backstage for a little bit. I remember asking him because I just didn't even understand how somebody could actually get that condition. Yeah. And uh, I was just like, I, I think I said something like, how, how did you do that? And he goes, well, you know, when, when you've dieted long enough and you don't think you could diet anymore, well, then you just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's, that's good advice, too. Not, yeah, it absolutely is. And I've given that advice and take and use that advice myself throughout my career. But I'll never forget it. He, serious as a heart attack, just looked at me and said, well, you just keep going Yeah, until you're right where you need to be. <laughs> Yeah, it's so simple when you put it that way. It's there's no magic, you know. It's just you. No. You just diet until you're fucking shredded. Period. <laughs> period. And it's, it's just like Arnold. You know, Arnold says, "If it jiggles, it's fat." You know, it's got to go. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, um, let's fast forward just a minute here. Then now you're in. Uh, you're training in at Gold's Venice, and, uh, yeah. and 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 you are a personal trainer there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I okay. run my business out of Gold's Venice and um, and have been training there. I mean, that's why I moved to L.A. You you were talking at the beginning of the show about uh, having such good coverage of the guys and nationals and everything like that. Well, you know, that's what brought me out there. I can remember watching Muscular Development and seeing, you know, all the different guys coming up, going to the USAs every year and yeah. watching all the videos in the trenches and stuff and, and following Charles and, and everybody who's training people around the gym. And that that was that was all I ever wanted to do. Yeah. That was all I ever wanted to do. And so I came and did it. <laughs> no kidding. How old were you when you moved out there? Because that's like the bodybuilder dream, you know? 
Yeah, it, it really, it really is. Um, I was, let's see, I moved out, I moved out March 5th, March 18th, 2015. So that's what, what year is it now? It's 2019. So almost five years ago, I was, I was just about 27, 27 okay. when I moved out here. Right on, man. That's a, that's a, that's gotta be, that's like a real formative time in life too. That's a, a huge jump. And I feel like, man, just the, the obstacles that you have to face do like in a move like that alone, like you got to have a lot of guts to make a move like yeah. that. You really do. You had to be terrified. Yeah, and, and it, you had to be terrified in I, some ways. I, I was, I didn't really know what I was going to do, to be honest. I just, uh, it was funny because I had a job interview, um, up in South Dakota to go work for the railroad okay. as a railroad conductor that a friend of mine had set me up with. And then I had another friend who was living here in LA and it was right around the time of the LA fit expo. And I was talking to him on the phone. He goes, well, why don't, why don't you just come out here for the fit expo? And then go out to your job interview. Just come hang out and see Golds and, and CLA and see what you think. And I was like, okay, that sounds great. And so I flew here from Albuquerque to LA, stayed with my friend, and we went to Golds. And, and I just remember walking in and just being like, yep, this is where I want to be. No kidding. And it, it really, I mean, you know, as a bodybuilder, when you've gone to new gyms, outside of golds, you know, just like you walk into a random 24 hour fitness and, you know, all the guys are going to, you know, be looking at you and who the hell is this guy? What's, what's going on here? You know, and it's right. You got that weird, you know, the weird testosterone thing bouncing around <laughs> people trying to size you up, stuff like that. Right. I swear I walked into golds and I, I barely got by the first, by the front desk before someone was like, man, who are you? You're nice to meet you. I'm blah, blah, blah. And shook my hand. And oh dude, that's it cool. Just, it's just not like any other gym. And even, even though most people that were there in the nineties will sit there and say, Oh, it's crap. Now it's not anything mm. like it used to be. And it sucks. You know, it was way better then. And now you got to this gym shark stuff and Instagram, this and people filming this, you know, you just got to know what to look for. I mean, I, you know, Rick Valenti and, and I mean, for one, Charles glass is there every day still. Yeah. And so, you know, you're sitting right next to him, but that's not, that's just one out of many. Yeah. I mean, I, there's guys that are in pumping iron. that still work out there every day. You that's can go up, shake their hand, give them a high five, stuff like that. That's cool, man. Um, yeah. I, I tell people all the time, I say, I don't even like the beach. I moved to L.A. for gold. Huh, no kidding. You know, and yeah, there's an energy really there, man. There there really is, too. You also work out there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm there every day, pretty much all day. No kidding, man. So tell me about your training a little bit. You got some freaking ridiculous legs, first of all. And I, I mean, for for your height, how tall are you? You seem like a taller guy. Yeah, six, about 6'1", six somewhere between 6'1 and 6'2". So six one uh, man, and with the legs, I mean, it's hard for tall guys to grow legs like you have. I feel like that's a downfall. You get that that like long rectangular look, you know, to your body for a tall guy. But your legs are freaking nasty, man, especially from the side. Oh well, thank you. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. I remember when I started bodybuilding um, and started learning about the sport and, and the lifestyle. I remember telling myself, "Look, if you're going to do this, you're not going to be one of those tall dudes with no legs. It's just not going to be the way it's going to go." <laughs> yeah. And, and I have, I've trained legs twice a week since I can remember. And, and as I've learned more about training them and, and practice training, because I was a basketball player growing up, I wasn't a football player or a, you know, a, a weightlifter or anything growing up. I played basketball. Okay. And so all of my weightlifting training has been as a bodybuilder. Um, and, uh, I, I attribute that a lot to how I've, grow my legs because you know i just I, I can remember sitting there and studying all the videos that kai green used to put up about how he trained his mm -hmm. legs and and all the guys that i could find that had good legs i just studied it and learned it um but yeah legs is it's it's big and you're right it is a downfall um to a lot of people and i i, I just but i just was committed to just crushing them every day so what's and worked you for you What's worked for you with your legs like what you know you i'm sure you know because i understand what you're saying you, you took what you've seen yeah. You tried on probably a lot of different training styles and methods. What works for Doug? And, and you said you train it twice a week. So I'll, I'll start out with this then, I guess. Do you split yeah. that up? Is it like a ham day, a quad, and a quad day or what? Uh, at this point, yes. It's pretty much a, a quad dominated day with, you know, I'll usually do quads with lying leg curls to finish. Okay. And then on hamstring day, I'll do all hamstrings and glutes and finish with some sort of extension. Or, or lunges to, to focus on the quads a little bit. I mean, the lunges focus on both, but, uh, and it's evolved a lot, but what really built the size um, and my, my muscle connection to my glutes was figuring out how to squat like a bodybuilder and okay. then taking the, the squats, 
you know, taking the squats from just going up and down to understanding what you're supposed to, what your muscles are supposed to do while you're squatting. Yeah. And, and, and then figuring out how to get there with 600 pounds, 700 Fuck. pounds, stuff like that. That's really what, what I attribute the size and the mind muscle connection to was just being under the squat rack and, and just pounding them. Now, as I've, as I've gotten a little bit older and stuff, it, it's changed but. I, you know, like even when I'm in contest prep right now, I can't stop thinking about getting back to squatting heavy again, and then, you know, as soon as nationals is over. Yeah. So, so, so I, I think squats pretty much everything. Do you feel like, uh, have you lost some strength then? Like, you, you know, going into this, like, uh, what would you say uh, percentage wise you are, we're what, a couple weeks out now from, uh, from when you're in your off season? Yeah, we're about two weeks out. I, I, I can't, I've actually thought about that recently because I don't feel like, I definitely don't feel like I'd go put 600 pounds on my back right now and squat. Okay. I don't feel like that would, that would be good at all. But at the same time as this, you know, one of the things that I've actually struggled with is keeping my legs full enough on stage hmm. to really put what I look like in the gym up there. And so what we've done this time is we've really pounded the food on my leg days and then increased the volume and done a little bit more of the superset stuff. And, and so I can't really, it's not really apples to apples. Like I'm doing different stuff than I was when I, I you know, when I'm really strong. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't, so I don't feel weak, but I'm doing more, you know, 20 rep sets, super set with walking lunges and stuff like that. Charles come up with some crazy stuff to have me do. Okay. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's apples to oranges. I don't feel weaker, but I, you know, that, that absolute deep power that it would take to squat like that, that's probably not there right now. Right on. You said Charles, is that, are you, is Charles Glass training you? Yeah, Charles, Charles trains me. Brad, oh. Rowe does, Brad Rowe does my diet and then Charles runs my workouts. Right. Okay. Now it's all coming together. I'm sure that Brad yeah. and you get along when it comes to leg training then too. I've been out there as a matter of fact, I've been there at like, I went, I did, um, Titan Classic out there a couple of years ago, and uh, okay. it was 2017. I remember doing like my last session of cardio at like 4:30 in the morning, and I look over, and there's some guy in a pink and gray shirt and pink tights doing like walking lunges, finishing a brutal workout. It's like 4:30 in the morning, and I look, and, oh yeah, that's Brad Rell. He's just yeah, he, he trains good. he trains legs like a crazy man. There's no question. Have you ever had a chance to train with him? Yeah, yeah, uh, I train with him every now and then. He does train like a crazy man. That's absolutely true, um, and uh, he he's pretty wild. Now he's got that newbie thing that he's doing with the electric stimulation, and he's, wow, okay. I, I don't know if you've seen any of that stuff. He's training with that, um, and and I actually did quads using that thing just uh, like three weeks ago. That was an interesting experience. Um, but yeah, Brad is uh, Brad. Brad is a hardcore individual. Let me tell you. I bet, man. It's it's interesting. It's funny because I I uh, I feel like we can say this. We can say like this guy trains. You really you can't convey it just through a conversation, though. It's something that you have to really see and experience. Like intensity, you know. I think that that's where we're, yeah. we're, we're getting around to here. It's intensity. I feel like it's something that I'm always in my life relearning. What's the most intense I can be? You know, what there was a point I thought when I was in my parents' basement when I was a kid, and I was like, oh yeah, this is so intense. And I look back at that now, you know, and I've redefined intensity like a hundred times since then. You know what I mean? Oh, I think that's probably my goal going into the gym every day is trying to redefine intensity on a daily basis. Hmm. You know, you, you just really have to, um, you have to meet yourself with a new challenge every day. Hmm. Otherwise it just becomes normal after all. Yeah. yeah. You strike me as a guy who carries some intensity and brings, some, brings that to the gym. It's really, man, it's something you got to really be passionate about, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's, that's the only way you can do it to the way that, I mean, I'm not going to say the only way you can do it because there's plenty of guys I know that, that train with moderate intensity and get what they need out of it. But that's just not the way I want to do it. If somebody told me that if I was to calm down and not train so hard, I'd look better. I still probably wouldn't do it that way. <laughs> I, I enjoy it very much. And I feel like you do, you have to love what you're doing yeah, and you have to enjoy finding the, the limit to your potential or finding your perceived limit to that potential. Yeah. Um, in, in order to really capitalize on it. Yeah, that makes total sense.
Uh, you said fifth national show. Which was the last one, and how long ago was that? Now, uh, the last one was North Americans this year in August. Oh, okay. That was my last national. So you just yeah. competed at North Americans, and how did you do there? I got fifth. Fifth place. I got fifth. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it, I was just talking to someone else uh, the other week on this segment. I mean, realistically, I feel like if you can get in the top five at a high end national show on any given day, those guys could be switched around. So it's. It, it's great to see you in the mix there. Then, um, what? Uh, Believe me, I feel that way too. Well, I'm sure. What? Did, what did you take away from that show? What have you been trying to improve since then? Uh, fullness and uh, this show. You know, this was I at North Americans. We really were conditioned. Okay. Um, we were out of this world shredded, and I just, I just didn't. You know, it's like I just didn't fill up all the way. Mm. And that's what we really got to figure out now. And I feel like as I've grown into my into my body, it's become harder and harder to maintain that level of glycogen mm. fullness and, and understand you know where we need to be. So what we're trying to do this time is really get on stage. I mean, honestly, I'll probably I'll probably be about twenty pounds heavier than I was at the North Americans, even though it's only been a couple of months. Wow. And that's that's really the goal. Wow. Um, but I was. I was peeled. I, that, I really, I was really peeled, and then it just didn't translate to being on stage. I was just kind of flat and washed out. Right um, so, hopefully, that's what we fix this time. Okay. So, yeah, because I was just thinking, man. I mean, it, it's only been a couple of months, but if you were freaking peeled a couple months ago, that's a long time. That's that you know to stay to have gotten in shape and now be ready again. What have you guys done in between that? It sounds like you've you've just filled up and and focused on yeah, that. Yeah, that's now. pretty much exactly what we did. We we filled up and then we basically did everything I could to keep myself calm and not freaking out about, you know, getting fat again or you know, you just we just kind of were have been in a holding pattern of okay, you know, I'm lean, so now fill up and then flatten out and then fill up and then flatten out and kind of maintain that level of conditioning mm. while we figure out what it's going to take to stay full, how much food we're going to have to eat to stay full, et cetera, et cetera. That's um, cool. So it's really just kind of been in a holding pattern. I, even the, the, the judging feedback that I got from the North Americans was basically make some minor adjustments and don't, you know, don't really change too much. You know, you have, a, you have a good shot at it. Nice. So that's, that's really what it was, you know, and you can imagine being at Gold's, there's a lot of guys in my ear, yeah. you know, like and 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 not just guys. I mean, guys with pretty good histories that you know were kind of like, man, that's not what you look like when you left here. I don't know what mm, you did. Yeah, you know. And I was just, you know, <laughs> you know, Charles Glass tells you that, and you're just like, oh Jesus, all right, well, I'm sorry. Hold yeah, <laughs> you know? I bet, man, I bet. Yeah. So it sounds like you've been. Uh, now, how long have you been dieting for altogether? Because it sounds like you've been dieting for a while. Then, if you were ready back in that was September. And we're in, you know, November now. Yeah. I mean, I I guess we really started dieting for the North Americans probably in, let's say, late March, early April is when we really got rolling. Okay. Um, And so that, that's been how it is. And like I said, over the, this past, this prep coming into nationals has been kind of interesting because it's not really like I'm dieting. Hmm. You know, carbs are still pretty high. I'm still pretty comfortable because we did all the work to get ready for North Americans. And so it, it, it's kind of like we dieted really hard for North Americans and then kind of backed off a little bit of the depletion. So it wasn't so miserable. I mean, it, you know, we're still in contest prep, but, you know, I've had myself, you know, refeeds whenever I, you know, at least once a week or so, something like that. And uh, cardio stayed pretty mild because we don't want the legs to go away. We don't want to eat any of the muscle that we have going on right now. Absolutely. And that so it's, it's been, it's, it's been much more comfortable coming into nationals. Um, the, than it than it was before North Americans. I I killed myself getting ready for North Americans. Right on, man. So what what has been the difficulty? You know, I mean, the, we all have you know our struggles. It's, no matter how yeah. easy a prep is, it, you know, it's it is work. It is difficult, and we do have to we do have to kind of face ourselves. You know, we're our as the, as everybody always says. You know, we're our own biggest competition. You know, what has life dealt well, you true. this year that you could say this has been the the biggest thing that I've had to contend with while prepping. Uh, the biggest thing I've had to contend with while prepping is um, definitely this year has been the first year that I kind of feel like I've felt a little bit of my age structurally. Okay. You know, I'm hmm. 32, 
which I know that's still a pretty young bodybuilder, but this is probably the first time that I've really had to be like, all right, we need to spend some time getting body work done. Mm, we need yeah. to make sure that, you know, everything is in line and stuff before we train. I can't just get out of the truck, walk in the gym, put on the squat rack and go, <laughs> Yeah, you know? Um, and, and that there was that. And then, you know, honestly, as a super heavyweight, the thing that I've had the hardest time with, and this has been for the past two or three years is eating enough food. Really? You know, I that's, bet. that's really it. I mean, sitting down with a, with, with a fork every two hours, just, you know, shoveling two and a half cups of rice and 10 ounces of chicken is, it, it, it's tough after a while. And my digestive system, mm. um, seems to be one of my biggest bottlenecks, you know, it just got, there comes a time where it's like, no, nope, I'm not, my body doesn't want to eat that food right now. Yeah. And, and that, that's been probably, probably those two things have been the biggest training, you know, knock on wood. And thankfully I've, um, I, I, I love to train. I don't really have anything I don't like doing when it comes to training and I look forward to it every day. So, and, and the diet, I'm pretty comfortable with, with bland food. You know I mean? I, I really feel like God made me to be a bodybuilder. So it, it's pretty easy for me to deal with that, but you know, stuff in your face full of food and just keeping yourself healthy. Yeah, I think, you know, especially for guys who don't have the size that someone like yourself does, it's, uh, you know, it it doesn't equate as much. You know, you, you think it would be awesome. I get to eat two cups of rice, as you said, you know, every every two hours. Yeah. So that's that's the off season. That's what your meals look like, about two cups of rice every couple of hours somewhere in there. Yeah, something like that, so, you know, depending on what the carb is. But and, and really, that's I mean, even right now, you know, right now, it's a cup and a half of rice every two hours. No kidding. Um, Are you hungry yeah. now? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, could, I mean, right. This the, it's ironic. The fast the past few weeks I've been I, I feel like I could have eaten that, you know, that that big diet. But there was before before the uh, or actually right after North Americans when we came and we decided we were going to go after nationals. Um, Brad was like, well, let's, let's get bigger then let's, let's get you back up over 300 pounds. And so we, we decided to do that. And there, you know, there was a time when I had to go to, there's another pro here in, in gold. You probably know him. He just turned pro Henry Jackson. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, you know, him and I are buddies and I went up to him and I was like, bro, are oh, you right really on. eating this kind of, I was like, are you really eating this kind of food right now? You know, cause I see him come in and he's probably one of the few guys that, especially in the off season, he, you know, he makes me feel like a little guy and, uh, <laughs> You know, he'll walk around and he's got his four Rice Krispie treats with him next to him as he's <laughs> training and stuff. And I'm like, are you really eating this kind of food? And he looked at me and he goes, yeah, just about. I'm like, how do you do it? He said, you just shut up and do it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's pretty much the only thing I could think of too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just, it's a lot of food. It's, if I always say, if you're comfortable in bodybuilding, you're wrong. You know? <laughs> What's so, uh, what are you weighing about right now, ballpark? 295. 295 man and and what'd you say you you were on stage at north americans 270 270 Two, yeah yeah i weighed I, in at like 271 wow. wow yeah i couldn't imagine you losing getting back down you know at 295 now i couldn't imagine you getting yeah. in if you're ready now you know that's there's no way i mean depleting is what seven pounds eight pounds you know what i mean if you really got I depleted mean, but I mean, yeah, that's that, I had that yeah. conversation the other day. It's kind of crazy. I, I, I was like, I don't understand where those 20 pounds went huh. because I was two, I was 285, 290, you know, 10 days out from the North Americans too. And then by the time I get there to weigh in, I'm down that low. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I really, sometimes I'm like, I don't understand where it goes, but I understand, you know, as you're, you know, relatively speaking, if you're a 300 pound guy, well, you know, 15, 20 pounds is about the same as, you know, eight to 10 pounds on a 220 pound guy. So I right. guess that kind of makes sense, but yeah, it, it blew me away with the North Americans, what happened and, and how it just shrunk off me. And I feel like it shrunk off me from Tuesday, huh. maybe even Wednesday before the show to the show day. Okay. It was crazy. Okay. It was really crazy. I could imagine too, your conditioning has to keep, have gotten better too since then. I mean, I know you've been eating food, but it's like you get to that point and speaking of Dr. Scott Stevenson, we were just talking about this on Muscle Minds this past week. You get to that point where you, after you're in shape, that when you start eating more food, it can it can spark new fat loss. And and I imagine that even with increasing, that you've still been getting improving. You know, the quality has to have gotten better too in that in that two oh, month period of time. You know, it it absolutely has, and it has really kind of taught me the lesson that you know being too lean. <laughs> that's a real thing. Hmm. You know, if you're too depleted and you're, and you're flat, you're going to look softer than if you, 
might have a little bit of water on your lower back, but you're full everywhere. Mm. You know, the muscles are going to pop more. It's pressed up against the skin, and that's going to be the most crispy and defined look you're actually going to get. Now, have you done multiple shows in the past? In the like same, multiple shows in yeah, the year? Yeah, in the same season. Um. Yeah. Last year, the last year I did the USA's and the Nationals. Okay. Okay. Uh, with and I actually did a, I did I did three shows last year because I did the West Coast Classic. Mm. Um, to qualify for the USA's again because I was out of the top five the previous year, and then I did the USA's and then the Nationals later on that year. Okay. Um. So. Oh, right on. Yeah. No, I just was I was just wondering how that had worked. I I just I feel like it 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 you know when I first started competing, I was you know especially too part of it was work wise. I only had time. I, I had two weeks off per year for vacation, and so I'd take one yeah. week off to take a vacation with my girl, and then I'd take another week off and compete. You know use that peak week and, and all that, take that time off. Um, so I only ever did one show, but now, you know, I've had the opportunity to do multiple shows. You really do learn a lot, don't you? I, I feel like it's really oh. beneficial to do more than one because it versus just putting all your eggs in one basket. Uh, you've gotten to learn so much from North Americans now, right? Oh, you definitely do. And you carry some momentum with you that I think is, mm. is really awesome. I mean, you know, you have something a little closer in your mind, you know, as you're training and as you're dieting and stuff like that, hmm. looking towards your next target, as opposed to like, oh, I got to wait till next year now. Yeah. And, you know, that's a whole lot. That's a whole lot of stuff that you're going to forget by the time you start prepping for next year. <laughs> right. Whereas, you know, you're not going to, I mean, I, I still remember the North Americans like it was last week. Yeah. You know, I can go through it in my head and I can go through each part of the process and think about what we did. And then I, you know, that way it's easier to compare what we're doing this time and stuff like that. I, I definitely think, if you're, you know, if your body can handle it and you don't start getting adrenal fatigue and, and stuff like that, it, it's definitely the way to go. Yeah. And especially in a situation like you, you had, it sounds like, you know, you've gotten to ease off. You aren't doing as much cardio now. You know, you're eating more food now. It sounds like the stress levels have been reduced in the last eight weeks versus gone up. Oh yeah. That, yeah. I almost feel like I'm cheating to be honest, <laughs> just because it's like, I just get, um, and, and, and that's another part of the goal that we have is trying not to allow apprehensiveness and, you know, the nervousness to, to come into play, mm. you know, before this, before the nationals, it's, I really just want it to be like, I just decided to go to Miami and walk on stage, yeah. you know? And so it, this has kind of been conducive to that. Cause it's just, you know, situation normal. I wake up in the morning, I go to work, I do cardio after I train, I do cardio before I come home, hmm. you know, and if I just keep that rolling all year long, well, then it's like nothing really changes. I'm not really in prep. Yeah. And uh, uh, I've also enjoyed that very much. But yeah, we've, we've been able to come off the gas. And the other thing is you're able to, like you said, because I just did a show. So I'm able to really focus even on my, you know, in in the consideration of my training split and the consideration of, of what I'm going to train that day and, and, and everything like that, we're able to really just be focused on the things we need to change hmm. from this show because I'm already in shape. It's not like we have to train for conditioning. It's not like we have to really train to put on size. We're training to bring up the body parts that we were lacking. And so it's the focus has been, you know, very specific. Yeah. And, and that's been kind of nice as opposed to just, you know, well, we just do a six day split and we'll see how we come out when we're in shape. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I just, you know, related, but kind of off topic here. I know a lot of the guys that are, that are listening and watching, you know, they're not at the level that you're at, you know, these guys aren't 300 pounds. I'm not 300 pounds. I, c I could learn from you. You know, a lot of people could, plus you're a trainer we all can learn from everybody. Sure. Sure. And plus you're a trainer. You see a big cross section of, uh, of, you know, different types of, uh, you know, people that are trying to to do things like you are. Um, you work with Charles Glass, so you have a, a, a close view of of his methodologies, his ideas, as well as Brad Rowe. You know, I, I'm sure that you have some fantastic insights. What would you share with the listeners and the viewers as far as as far as what they can do to try to improve their training? Where where are you seeing people, even people like? You know, a lot of the guys, and I'll give you a kind of paint a picture of what our listeners are. Uh -huh. They're they're people that have been doing this for several years at least, anywhere from we'll say two to ten, you know, two two to life. But a lot of the guys, yeah, you know, they've been doing this for a few years. They've made some progress. Maybe they're in light heavyweight. Maybe they're middleweight, moving up to light heavyweight. But they want to be able to move up to that next level, you know. And and, and I, I see, you know, training is such a big element of that. Let's focus on the training aspect of it. What do they need to do that they're not doing? Man, the most important thing that I have found is if it doesn't feel 
like it's hitting the muscle that you want it to hit, well, well then it's probably not. And don't settle for for just moving stuff around. I mean, hmm. there are so many different ways and so many different things that that can be done to make sure that you're hitting it the right way for yourself. And I feel like that's very different for everybody. But I think a lot of times we all get stuck trying to follow a plan because somebody said it was a plan. Yeah. And and so that's obviously the end all be all because, you know, even if it is like, well, Charles does it this way. So, you know, do it. We got to do it this way. And we got to do this many sets, this many reps. It's like, you know, if something feels really good one day, you go in there and you hit incline dumbbell press and you, you know, even just tuck your elbows down just a little bit and press and it really pumps up your chest. Yeah. Well, sit there until you can't move that weight anymore, you know, and really learn how to mm. stimulate your muscle and take the time and be patient with yourself to learn what your body's telling you. Huh. I feel like that's one thing that that I communicate with my clients a lot of time. You know, clients will come to me and, and they'll just I'll be like, all right, well, do a lap pull down. Let me see how you do it. Yeah. And then I'm like, OK, change this, this, this and this. Does it feel better? And they're like, yes. I said, well, good. That's how you should do it then. Huh. You know, and, and it's just as simple as that. I mean, when you ask me that question, there's so many things that, that, you know, I feel like I could give advice about. But that's that's the main one is don't settle for something just because somebody says hmm. this is the way you're supposed to do it. You know, take what they say and apply it to how you're doing it. If it works, great. If it works a little bit, keep that in information in your mind, but keep searching for what's going to work the most because you have to feel it. Yeah. You know, this is a the body gives you a tactile response to pretty much everything you stimulate it with. Hmm. And you have to pay attention to that more than anything else. Hmm. That's interesting, man. That's freaking great advice too. I feel like, you know, I, I could relate to a lot of what you're saying. I could relate to it on, you mentioned legs and I'm guessing that a lot of this relates to your leg training. Cause you, you had said that earlier that you had to learn how to feel the weight, train it like train legs, squat, like a bodybuilder versus just yeah. moving the weight. you could move the weight all day. What, what were you seeing before? Were you still, I imagine you were still moving some incredible pounds without actually putting it in the quad, possibly even more weight than you, you know? Oh yeah, absolutely. I laugh at that because, you know, like I can think back to even when I was still in Albuquerque, I, I remember the first time I squatted five plates, yeah. you know, and it was like, I squatted five plates, probably did three or four reps, you know, and uh, I was exhausted. My lower back hurt <laughs> and I slept really good that night, Yeah, you know? And then as time goes by, you come back down and, 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 you know, five plates now probably feels harder than it did then. Yeah. Yeah. But I get way more out of it and my lower back doesn't hurt nearly as much. <laughs> and when I get home before I fall asleep, my legs are cramping under my glutes and, and my, the outer sweep of my quads, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and yes, legs is, legs is probably the first place I learned that. I mean, you know, back to that first advice, if, if, if you're a bodybuilder and you don't know how to really squeeze your glutes while you're just standing there. So you feel like you're trying to crack a walnut in between your ass. cheeks. <laughs> yeah. Well, you should probably learn how to do that because that will help you with mm. the leg press. It'll help you with the straight leg deadlift. It'll help you with the squat. It'll help you with the lunge. Yeah. It'll help you with pretty, and it'll help you with every single pose you ever try to do on stage. No kidding. You know, um, you know, just learning how to kind of communicate with your legs. Huh. That's huge. It'll change everything. I mean, you'll take your squat. If you think you can squat 500 pounds like a power lifter, well then go, you know, figure out how to, I call it, I call it plieing up, you know, like in, yeah. in ballet, you, you, you squeeze up into a plie type motion. I mean, that's much different than you would just stand up in a squat, but oh sure. man, you know, that's the kind of stuff that'll, that'll change your world. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's a, I, I, I want to get in the gym now after, after listening yeah. to you talk about this. Yeah. Glutes for me were long time, man, were, were a big, uh, they were, they were a big weak link for me. They just, they wouldn't fire first. It was hams and glutes. Yeah. And I, I got the hams to fire glutes still didn't fire. And I found by not only, not only am I getting better development in my legs overall by having learned how to train my glutes, also, get this. My back feels better. I used to screw my back up yes. all the time. And the, the chances of me doing that are far less now when I have that recruitment. What, uh, what's what been a strong body part for you? What's, what's the, what are the things you saw first when you started training that popped out? My back. back. I, remember, I remember probably six months into my training, I, I learned how to do a lat spread. And I mean, my back just grew. And obviously, it, you don't really see your back, especially when you don't know to look at it like when you're first starting bodybuilding you don't really know you know what it's even supposed to look like and you that's another one of those ones where it takes you a while to figure out what a lap pull down is supposed to feel like as opposed to just pulling it and stuff like that but my back has always been one of my stronger parts yeah. um and and my legs back and legs you know those those are the two things that, that stood out the most 
Right on. Now, did you also find a lot more strength with your back than say other muscle groups, like like better connection and a better ability? No. Ironically, no. I feel like my back has a better mind muscle connection, but it's weaker. I'm a much stronger presser. No kidding. It huh. took me a long yeah. It took me a long time to figure out how to how to train chest like a bodybuilder, but it didn't take me that long to bench 400 pounds. Okay. You know, like. Uh, but my back, I always felt like as soon as I learned what it was supposed to feel like, I could squeeze my back really well in a lot of different exercises and and really connect with it well. But I wouldn't say like I'm, I got a really strong back. I don't even really like to deadlift. I mean, I I, I do like barbell rows and stuff like that, and, and, and that, that I'm pretty strong on. But, uh, but no, I would say I'm probably a stronger presser, but my back develops better. Right on. So tell me, what did you, how, what did you have to do? to figure out chest to get that to get to get that to grow well what were you let me ask you this what were you doing wrong with it because i know i can tell you with myself i found that i was pressing with my shoulders a lot more and that yeah. my shoulders grew yeah. first and then i had i got on stage and i was like wait a second why don't i have any pecs the first time i competed yep. That's pretty much exactly right. Okay. I remember even back in, in in high school, I was a stronger incline presser than flat bencher. Okay. And and everybody was like, that's really weird that you're stronger at incline bench press than you are at flat bench. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, well, I am, so whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it it was it was pressing with my shoulders. What I had, what I learned, the, the first and best advice I ever got from my chest was the idea that your elbows have to come down like you're torsioning the bar down, like you're bending the bar down as you press. Mm, okay. And, and then once I learned the um, hmm. the pressure points of your pinky and ring finger coming together on a fly, stuff like that to really contract the chest and then figure out how to translate that from just doing it on the pec deck to being able to do that in, in regular movements like, you know, a dumbbell incline press or something like that. Um. And and Charles Charles is a master of the chest. He really taught me a lot of stuff about that. I bet. Um, I think a lot of I, I think a lot of guys tend to go weight. You know, if you have good shoulder mobility, which I mean, two ways to go about it. If you don't have good shoulder mobility, like I feel like sixty to seventy percent of the people out there, hmm. then you really just need to get mobile before you try to train tra- train chest, or you're you're just going to have a tough time with it no matter what. Yeah. And then if you do have good shoulder mobility, you probably come too deep in the stretch and come off of the chest losing tension uh-huh. yeah. at the bottom of the rep. And then you press up, and that's just going to beat your shoulders up until you don't have good shoulder mobility anymore, huh. and you're in the other category. <laughs> so it's it's kind of a, you know, Dan, if you do, Dan, if you don't. But that's that's one thing. Learning how to keep the tension on the chest and squeeze the chest across your body as opposed to just pressing the weight up. Stuff like that really helped me a lot. That makes sense, man. Uh, okay, magic mirror. You ever pose in front of it? In front of the magic mirror? The magic mirror. The, the, you don't know what the magic mirror is. It's it's uh, no. it's it's it, it's at Gold's Gym. It's the one over oh, there by the... You, you're talking by the squat rack. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard, uh, yeah, but that's my one of my favorite spots. Matter of fact, if you go up those stairs now behind it, that's there's some bikes up there for cardio. Okay. And so it's like you come down off the bike and then you just take off your shirt and pose right there. Yeah, I have several several moments there. As a matter of fact, just as I was leaving Guy Cicinino and um who's the other guy that's here for the two twelve, um Samir Trudy, they were both wow. over there posing down. Nice. Um Charles and everybody today. Yeah, that's you gotta you gotta pose there, and it is the magic here, most definitely. What's uh what's, like the, four in that gym. what's the best part about training there? I mean, I know there's a lot of it. The people. For me, I mean, I really, you know, I I really love bodybuilding from the eighties and nineties. Yeah. Um I love the way the guys used to train, I love the way they talk about training. And so for me, not only is it just the fact that I get to train at the same place they trained at, yeah. Um with some of the same equipment they trained at. I mean, this is, this is where the love of my life really began for me was at this gym in this location. But no, I mean, not only that, like, I don't know, you know, Rick Valenti is still there and and all those guys, a lot of them are still there. I mean, you, you still got Rico and Charles training clients just like they were when Flex and Chris were there training clients. That's crazy. You know, I can still go talk to the same people that, Flex Wheeler and Chris Cormier talked to about their training yeah. in like 94, 95. And to me, mm. that's, that's the best part about training. There. Wow. It's yeah. just being there. I mean, that's, the, that's what I love about bodybuilding is I, mean, I don't even, I mean, I love bodybuilding from the eighties and nineties. I try to live that way. Yeah. I try to do it that way. And so what better place to do it besides there? 
Yeah, that's pretty awesome, man. Yeah, there's there's something special about just the whole Gold's Gym, the whole Venice area. Something about that area that just is uh, so conducive. It's just the getting out there is the scary part for a lot of people, and it doesn't work, man. You are definitely a success story. You and here's the deal. I know just from knowing like what it costs to live out there, what it would take to actually build a clientele in that gym. Because, yeah, it's a great gym. There's a lot of people that come through it. There's a lot of competition, too. And there's some fucking great trainers in Los Angeles. So for you to be able to do this and make a living at it, like you had to really want that more than anything at that to to get that started. You know, you had to have. Yeah. You know, honestly, it, it, it to me, it's, it seems ordained. I really, hmm. I really can't say anything else besides that, that I'm, I'm just blessed, man. I love it so much. Hmm. And all, all I've really ever tried to do, there really wasn't a plan for me to like, all right, I'm just going to go down there. Hmm. I'm going to be a personal trainer. I'm going to try to get into Gold's gym. We're going to see how it goes. And and this is what I'm going to do. No, I have a, I have a degree in engineering. I left Albuquerque because I wanted to pursue bodybuilding. I found that in LA, it would be much more difficult than a small town like Albuquerque to get a job in the field I was working in. Mm. And so in kind of a, in kind of a, you know, last ditch effort to start making money after my little nest egg that I brought out to LA started to get too low, I just stopped by an LA fitness and was like, Hey, I'm a pretty good sales guy. I got a lot of good experience. Why don't you give me a job? Okay. They gave me a job. And then after about two months selling gym memberships, I said, this is terrible. I don't want to do this. <laughs> and so I got my personal training certification. Yeah. And if you would have told me, you know, six years ago that I was going to be a personal trainer, I, w- I, w- I would have been like, you're crazy. I don't, there's no way I can help these people work out. I, I just like working out. It's my thing. I like training, but there's, there's no way. If you would have told me, I would have said, you're crazy. Hmm. But as soon as I started training clients at this LA fitness, I just kind of knew this is what I was supposed to do. Hmm. This is, I, I enjoy it so much. It's the most rewarding job I could ever imagine. That's huge. And, and uh, you know, so I worked at the LA fitness for, mm, gosh, I guess this is, I guess it was a good two years. I was there uh, a year and a half, two years. And as I did that, I got better at training. I got, I got to know more people at Gold's as just a just a regular member. Yeah. And and then before you knew it, I just was like, "All right, well, let's let's go check out Gold's." And so I actually started I started training a couple a client there for a friend who was a trainer there. She just asked, she was like, "Hey, can you help me with this client? Just come to Gold's and train." So I would, you know, I trained this one client and then of course the management was like, Hey, you're not paying rent here. What are you doing? You, you can't do that. Yeah. And, it, and it, instead of throwing me out, the guy, he's not there anymore. He was the personal training manager. He says, you know, if you want to get set up here, just bring me your certification and I'll, I'll get you set up as an independent trainer. And he nice. made that initial offer and I was okay. And so I did that. And then as soon as the LA fitness found out that I had also signed up to be an independent trainer at goals, well, they said, I can't be a trainer at LA mm. fitness anymore. And I said, well, that's kind of silly. I'm going to take all my clients. I'm going to go to Gold's. And they were like, they're not going to move with you. Every single one but one did. Damn, yeah. And, that's uh, kick-ass yeah, right and there. I was, like, I was <laughs> like, you're crazy. You're going to let me go. I was making you tons of money over here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so we went to Gold's, and the rest is history. Fuck, yeah. And I just, you know, I, I and there is a lot of competition. You're absolutely right. There's a lot of competition in that gym. I mean, there's 30 of us running around, and all of them have been there for much longer than me. Hmm. All of them have accomplished so much in the industry. Um, but that's the cool thing about uh, about LA that I've found is if you want to work, people will let you work. Hmm. Because there's a lot of people out here that just don't really want to work. Huh. So if, if you're willing to put in the time and you're willing to, to really work with people, I've had nothing but opportunity wow. here. I mean, and again, like I said, it, it's all glory be to God, man. I've been blessed every step of the way. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, it is definitely a success story and I'm lucky and couldn't be happier. Let me tell you, couldn't be happy. That's so cool, man. So, uh, after nationals, what's the game plan from there? Well, it depends on if I win or not. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, uh, I have told most people that I'm not going to miss a national show until I have a pro card. Okay. That's, that's, that's my main goal. I mean, I started this. And I really, you know, I really want to finish it like, like that. Um, so that's, that's going to be my main focus. I mean, I am blessed enough that I, it doesn't seem like I will have any trouble with keeping my clients and just keeping the same routine until I get there and get it finished. Um, 
if it, if I do get it here, then then we'll probably just try to turn around and do the Cal Pro because it's in my backyard and you know there's be like six of us from Gold's doing. I can't think of any better way to make a pro debut, but yeah. I don't even want to really think about that right now. I just sure. want to get get through this. And I mean, honestly, if I could keep doing exactly this, I don't see how I you know for the rest of my life, I don't see how there's much I'd really want to change. Yeah. Yeah. That's, well, that that just, says a lot right there. You know, it it really does. You know, you got to think how many people are out there in the world right now that feel that way about their lives. There's, you know, there's there's a big percentage of people oh. who I think don't. I I agree. I I'm I'm right there with you. I feel the same way in my life too. And in that way, yes, we are lucky. But I will also be the first person to tell you that you worked your ass off to get where you are too. Oh. You know. Well, I mean that's 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 what that's what life is though. You know, life is work, and the beauty is. In my opinion, I've found that the most beauty in life that I've found is in realizing what it is you can work for yeah. and then realizing the fruits of those labor. Anything anybody's ever given me, I've usually just pissed away, you know, um, but things that I've worked for and things that I've been blessed with due to, you know, how I've blessed other people or whatever, however you want to look at it. When you work for something, that's the beauty comes from working for it. And mm. and I wouldn't have it any other way. That's badass, man. Anything else we should cover while we, while I got you here, Doug? I feel oh, like man, we, you know you're you're the host, and I, I'm just happy to be here. Happy sure, to, I, man, happy I'm happy to, to have you. I know, I never know yeah. how these conversations are going to go. You know, especially a guy like yourself. I hadn't met you before. You know, I looked at all your yeah. all your pictures and stuff on Instagram. I'm like, yeah, this dude's got a great physique, and but I never know how it's going to go, man. And this is uh, it was a lot of fun. I feel like uh, I I can feel your uh, your energy, man. You know, you're you're you've got a lot of positive hard work ethic energy behind you and uh and and i think that that's the foundation of uh you know what's helped you be successful in your job what's helping you be successful in bodybuilding and really man i feel like that's the way to live your life because you know at the same time you that's, sound you yeah. sound genuinely happy too you know i mean that's what it comes down to is is life is just about figuring out what it is you want to do and and uh, and going after it. i heard a really cool quote the other day that that uh, has stuck with me like all week and says, it's the position of the sails, not the direction of the gales that determine your destination. Hmm. And, and I just, that, you know, you just set your life up, set a target and work your ass off. And uh, chances are, if you do the best you can at every task you have on just a daily basis, you'll get somewhere that you'll enjoy. May not be exactly where you thought you were going, but you'll get somewhere that you'll enjoy. Oh yeah. So, do you have a website yeah. or anything for your training services? Uh, no, I, you know, at the moment I just use Instagram. Right Still kind of in the, in the dark ages there. I'm working on getting that set up, but, uh, you know, thankfully I'm busy in the gym training clients, so I haven't had time to get that set up yet. Yeah, no, seriously. I don't, I mean, yeah, I think you really. You can always find me on Instagram. What's your, uh, I'll, I'll have guys just in case, uh, you know, you need to, if you don't know it, then I'm going to have your Instagram information in the show notes. But for everybody who's listening, what is your Instagram? Yeah. Oh, it's just my name at Douglas Fruche. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And realistically, man, I mean, I feel like websites are great, but with social media nowadays and word of mouth and, you know, that's, that's all you really need. Obviously you're doing pretty damn well without, uh, without the website so far. So I, I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't waste too much time. You know what I mean? You're doing great, man. And like I said, oh, I really, I really appreciate your time. I, uh, I, oh. I think there's a lot of fun, man. And I feel like a lot of people are going to be inspired by this. I'm feeling inspired. I'm ready to go train now. Rock and roll. We'll go kill it. <laughs> Try some Jefferson squats, squeeze those glutes and have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, for another episode All of right, Think man. Big Bodybuilding Media Advices Radio, we're with Doug Fourche. Look for him at uh, Nationals. He's going to be in the super heavyweight division. Doug, appreciate your time, brother. Oh, thanks, Scott. Good talking to you. Thank you.